Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. You may notice that I sound a little bit different today. Um, my husband actually told me I sounded like a squeaky wheel, but I am doing my level best to make sure that I'm still putting out the videos that I need to put out, even though I've run into um, some snags along the way, which is a total other story time. But anyway, today we're going to be using the Lovely Layers Tulips, the Spring Vine Layering Frames, and we're going to be using lots of Distress Spray Stain, as well as the Mica. So these little strips here that you see is actually what gave me the idea for today's card. These were done by my kiddos, mostly my little jelly bean. I had these leftover strips of watercolor paper from Kidding, and I didn't want to throw them away. So I just put them in this box here, and I let her spray them at whatever color she wanted, as much water as she wanted. And she used some color combinations that I would never would have put together. And it really just goes to show you that like you can really put any colors together, and they'll come out beautiful. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm using some seedless preserves. I'm using some rusty hinge. I did use the um, harvest moon, which is a mica. That's the yellow. And the pink is cocktail, I think. I'll link them below. And then I'm going to add more water than I ever thought possible. And I'm just going to add it and keep adding the water. Now I did, you can see my box is kind of bending. That's what I'm doing with the paintbrush is I'm just holding the paper down flat. Um, and then I'm just, you know, adding any more color that I want because that's exactly what Caitlin did. And she came up with these really beautiful shimmery results. And you guys know, if you watch my channel, that I love really bright, intense color. And this is such a fast, easy way to get it. And so I'm going to use these to cut my die cuts out of. So here's me trying to just like figure out a way around this cardboard box. Um, I used blues, greens, and teals for the background. I believe I used peeled paint, peacock feathers, um chip sapphire and then I did bring in two of the blues um one blue and one teal of the mica and again I don't remember the names I apologize I'll link them below and then just a ton ton of water so that way it starts moving and then I just want you to leave it alone like once you spray it with all the water just let it be because I'm going to flip this box around here in a minute and I'm going to show you the one that we just did. It's still sitting in the same box. I haven't done anything to it, but just let it sit and you can see how they do their thing without any help from you, which is the beauty of watercolor, right? We want the water to do all of the work. And so here, just from sitting, you can see like how it filled in all of those areas. We've got this really great variation of color. Some are more yellow, some are more pink. Um, and then I just set those aside in the box while I finish doing this portion of the die cutting. This is the two largest layers from the Spring Vines um, layering frames, and this is just to provide some interest to the background. My original intention was to do a white on white so that the flowers would be the star of the show. Here is those pieces. They are still damp. They are not super wet, but I'm just going to hit them with my heat tool to make sure they're dry, dry before I do any of my die cutting because I don't want to rip my paper. Before we get too far along into the video, uh, I just want to note uh, a couple of things. First of all, honeybee, wait, let's go look at the shimmer. Like, we have to stop. Look at how beautiful and shimmery that is. Now, if you don't like the shimmer, the Distress Spray Stains will still give you this beautiful, intense color. It just won't give you the shimmer. The mica is what gives you the shimmer. Alternatively, if you don't have the mica sprays, you could do this with um, the Distress Spray Stains and then add Perfect Pearls, either in a spray form or in the powder form, and it would give you a really beautiful shimmer as well. So these are my lovely layers tulips. I'm coloring my greenery obviously out of the green and then the florals. 
I'm using all three of them, the full blown tool up, the smaller bud, and then the little teeny tiny bud. I'll be using all three on today's card. Anyway, back to what I was going to say, which is um, Honeybee's actually having a sale this weekend. It's 20% off and it is their Hello Spring sale and it runs the 15th through the 17th. So you'll have um, all day tomorrow to do any shopping. I will link to it below. The code is SPRING20 and the tulips are included. So are several of the other lovely layers. So if there's something that you have been wanting to try, um, but maybe we're kind of on the fence because of the price point, this is a great sale to take advantage of. The other thing that I wanted to note is the reason this video is a little bit shorter, um, I maybe edited it a little bit more than I normally would, is because I already knew that I sounded like this before I started my voiceover. And the reason that I sound like this, again, longer story, um, we talked previously in another video about um, doing, I made a pretty card with story time, and I think we're definitely going to go forward with that. So I will save that for maybe our first episode of I made a pretty card. Um, but I have been teaching for two days now. I've taught four classes. And on top of that, I got sick. Um, so between the being sick and the talking for um, each one of my classes was two to two and a half hours of just talking and instruction, my voice is this. It is just like cashed out. I yawned at dinner and my husband told me that I sounded like our dog, Emma. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm, do, I'm doing the best I can to make sure that I'm still, you know, getting you guys the things. I totally understand um, if this one is a little bit more challenging to listen to. I get it. I, my feelings won't be hurt. I won't be offended. Um, but just know that the technique is, is still a really good one. So I, of course, cannot let any cards go without adding some form of shading. So I'm going to shade my lovely layers just like I normally would, which is just by laying the previous layer on top and then marking out where the shadows would be and just kind of blending them out. I ended up with like a pinkish, purpley, almost like a a rosy gold kind of color tool up, which I think is really pretty. Um, so I just picked some pinks that I thought were close to that to add my shading. In my case, it is an RV66 and an RV55. But if you did a different color, maybe you just did like purples and pinks, you may want to change, you know, what you're shading with. Just look at the markers you have, see what is going to match the best. And really, this is like quick and dirty shading because I'm only using the two colors. I don't want to cover up all of that beautiful um, pigment that we have achieved with the sprays because the sprays are so intense, which is what I love about them because you can get really bold color with really little effort. Um, when you're doing ink smushing, which is what I would typically do to color my die cuts, when you smush down the ink and then you add the water, you dilute it quite a bit because the Distress Spray stains are already so intense in their color. When you add the water, it does not dilute it too much and you still end up with really beautiful, vibrant color. Um, plus, you know, if you have the micas or the Perfect Pearls on hand, you have the option to add the shimmer, which I love because I pretty much cover all of my coloring with uh, like a clear, um, like a Nouveau clear glitter marker or the Zig Wink of Stella clear. I add those anyway. So here it just gives me a lot of variated shimmer. So it is an all in one place. And I think that's super fun. Plus, Putting the card together with the white background is really going to let these florals, like the color of the florals, kind of pop forward. I think these are super fun for spring. 
Um, I haven't had the opportunity to use the tool up too much. They came together really easy. You guys know how I feel about the lovely layers. I think that they're just so well done and it's so easy to line them up and get a really dimensional die cut. And then because, you know, if you're not a colorist, and that isn't something that you enjoy spending a lot of time on, you're still going to get a really beautiful flower even if you don't add the additional shading like I did. If you just put them together the way that they are um, right from, you know, die cutting from the watercolor paper, I should have mentioned that. I, I, I did do all of my inking on um, Canson Monteval watercolor paper. So for the leaves, there isn't too much layering, just, you know, one little extra leaf that goes on there. Um, and then I'm not going to put them together until I have, like, the tool up top with the leaves, until I have them arranged on my card how I want them. And that just gives me a little more uh, leniency with my layout. So speaking of my layout, I tried a couple of different things before I really committed to what I was going to put together. Like I said, originally I was going to do white on white. I decided to try this plum color in the background, and I thought that that was really pretty, um, but I thought that the edges kind of detracted from the color of the flowers instead of adding to the color, you know, instead of helping the florals to kind of pop off the page. I felt like the darker color kind of detracted from that because I really want those blooms to be the focal point. So I am going to go ahead and try the white on white. I'm just going to slide this white piece of paper underneath it. These for sure make the color pop the most, but it also isn't the most interesting to look at. So then I got the idea that I had this um, leftover um, from the green. I had that leftover paper. And so I decided to try that. And that actually, because it was complimentary, because that's what we used for the leaves, it didn't detract from the blooms of the flowers, but still added interest to the background. So I just trimmed that down to an A2 size, and that is what I am going to use as my background. Because I did two half sheets of the watercolor paper, like I still have plenty of more that I could have die cut out of those. Um, I found a green that matched relatively close. This is, I think, pine from Hero Arts. I treated that with my anti-static tool. And then this sentiment is from the Be Still stamp set. And it says, do more of what makes you happy, which is one of its priority, probably number three in my life right now, is to do more of what makes you happy. Uh, again, story time for our new series that's coming up. Um, so I'm going to stamp that down in our brilliant white pigment ink, and then I will use white detail embossing powder on top of that, and then I will go ahead and heat set that until it is nice and smooth. These all have um, coordinating dies, which are great. They cut super close, so it's not like a big bulky sentiment. Um, Honeybee does such a wonderful job with that. So I'm just going to tape that in place, run it through my die cutting machine, and then we'll be ready to build the card. So most of this is going to go down flat. I'm going to put this part, um, this first layer down flat onto my green card base. Um, well, I shouldn't even call it a card base because it doesn't open. Card panel. Um, like that will have to be put onto a card base to make it a completed card. Um, but then this will go pretty much edge to edge. So you'll just see a little bit of the green around the scallop. And then, of course, those open corners, which are beautiful. And then I'm going to lay this in the middle, but I'm not going to adhere it down. And I'm going to adhere my florals flat to that secondary piece so that I don't have to worry about popping up each individual piece by itself. I can glue them flat to the panel and then pop up the whole panel. So trying to create that visual triangle with my three flowers, and then because the sentiment is pretty much the same color as our greenery, I went, originally, I thought I was going to put it kind of like right underneath the um, 
the bloom on the right. Like I was going to snug it right in there. And I actually didn't like how it hung off the edge. Um, so I decided to put it to the center on the bottom. Um, so these are going to go, like I said, they're going to go down flat. I'm going to be careful with my glue. See how I didn't put any like up at the tippy top edges because I don't want to get that glue onto my background. I intend to pop up that piece. So these were really fun um, and it was a really fun exercise to do with my kids. So Caitlin did do the majority of them because Peanut, uh, my son, lost interest pretty quickly in the spraying. But that's probably because when I got my Distress Spray stains, he wanted to buy something for one of his games. And I told him that I would give him the money for it if he did my swatches for my dis my spray stains. So he's actually already sprayed every color that I own onto these little square swatches of watercolor paper. So he lost interest in it pretty quick. I think he was already a little burnt out on the sprays. Not that I can blame him because I did buy several colors at one time. I needed them to be swatched. Um, so, but little jelly bean we figured out pretty quickly that it was better to give her the water so that way if she just sprayed haphazardly it didn't matter so she would pick the color she would hand it to mommy mommy would spray the color and then she would just spray as much water as she wanted so it was a good exercise for both of us um, to not only get to spend time together but for me to see obviously that I could put you know the yellow with the orange with the purple and it would still be pretty so I added my little foam circles behind this. I am going to pop this up right there in the center and let those tulips shine. Really love the way that these came out. I think it's such a pretty color and I'm a sucker for that shimmer. Y'all know that. So then here, this is, I'm kind of going back and forth again about the sentiment, um, but ultimately it's going to live at the bottom of the card in order to clear all of the die cutting that we have done and to make sure that it sits even. I'm actually going to add, this is our, um, I think they're like an eighth of an inch thick foam dots. They're the larger ones that Honeybee sells, and I'm going to cut them into strips and I'm gonna put them on the left and the right hand side. I'm gonna leave the middle empty because that will sit on top of the stems. So that way everything is flush and it sits nicely. And I don't, I'm not adding any more bulk to the die cuts that I already have there. So every time I'm just checking, um, you know, it's that old rule, like when you're building something, measure twice, cut once. I just constantly check them to make sure that it's going to work um, because those foam tapes mean business. You know, once you stick them down, they're, they're there to stay. Uh, which is how we want our adhesives to be, right? We want them to make it through the mail. But I also want to be able to fix my boo-boos. So um, I do add a little bit of glue into the center so that will stick to the raised die cut portion. And then that's just going to live right at the bottom in the center. To finish off the card, I did add some rhinestones. Um, I just picked some nice neutral ones. These are from the Vintage Love um, rhinestone collection. Speaking of rhinestones, they have several rhinestones packs that are actually part of that spring sale, that Hello Spring sale. So if you love these as much as I do, now is a great time to grab them because they're 20% off. Um, so I added that around the sentiment. And then I did go in with my white gel pen and then just add a couple of little highlights along the edges of the petals. Um, I'm not real particular about my highlights. I kind of just let my pen skip around. Um, I don't make sure that it's a solid line and that works for me, but you can do whatever works for you. And then that is the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you for writing out my, my scratchy little voice. Um, hopefully by the next voiceover will be much, much better. I always appreciate your guys' time. Thank you for being here and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.